Right, just for the sake of SRAMs, right, I know this thing got up tiered, but I kind of want to play it. So we're just going to go ahead and order the Harrier GR1. The bigger question here remains is how much money has Gaussian earned off this unique feature, that being VTOL. Hell, we even predicted a few years ago that this would probably become an exclusive feature. And while there are two in tech tree versions, they don't get SRAMs like the premium GR1 variant does. And boy, rank 5, 9.7 with 30mm Aidens. It's all about those short range air to air missiles. That's literally it. All right, um, I don't really need to go over this. You know what it does, it goes up and down, it goes whoosh. It has an insane climb rate. I think we should just jump straight into the gameplay. After waiting for a few minutes, we finally got a match. And I do appreciate everyone who subscribed and joined the channel recently. Welcome. We're gonna continue doing War Thunder videos while we can, or while we're mentally sane, but that doesn't matter. We're in the Harrier GR1. Now, should I have purchased this is the question you're going to be asking. It's like, don't buy into the Harrier hype. Everyone warned about it. Everyone was talking about it. And honestly, it was a last minute decision, honestly. And I thought, well, if I'm seeing matches with people doing really well, even at 9.3 with its former battle rating, which is now 9.7, those short range air to air missiles are all what anybody's talking about right now. This is it's probably why you probably see that this thing will increase its BR again. 10.0 in the near future hopefully that means the poor hunter <laughs> can actually go down in br slightly but again it's these short range air to air missiles so this is a point that i'm going to hit on consistently and obviously there is no skill involved you just fly it behind an enemy and launch your short range air to air missiles granted there is a bit of a capability and a strike factor which we're going to show you here in this very match but i'm already seeing comments from people saying where is my sea harrier where is this Guys, you've got four bloody ha uh, Harriers to play with. Why are you not happy with that selection of vehicles? Can you not just be satisfied with what you have? You know, Italy and France didn't really get much this patch. Obviously, they got some tanks, but I'm more for the minor nations. Sweden, Italy, France. I like those. Even Japan, I like those nations. Why? Because I've currently completed them. And I now have 27 aircraft left to unlock in War Thunder due to the new patch. And I'm quite aggravated at that. So, I decided to open my wallet, although, provided I did actually get given some Golden Eagles for this patch, and I spent them on this, as you saw by the intro. Why? I don't know. It's kind of a stupid decision, considering they just upped the battle rating as of recording this video. The patch went live probably 30 minutes before I started recording this. And again, it's just something that you just, you, you can't really predict here. Like, is this aircraft going to be good two years down the line? Or is it going to be exactly the same? You never know. So, you buy into it while you can, so you can grind effectively as you can, and you're basically feeding Garjan's bottom line. But is this thing a worthwhile grinder? Well, considering Matchmaker is taking incredibly long to get a match, you're looking at queue times of roughly three to four minutes on average with all servers enabled. That doesn't necessarily matter, we've got our first two targets here. And F-86, F-40, well, goodbye. See you later, go back to the garage for you, or should I say hangar, and the G-91 as well. We're gonna kill him as well? Yep, there's no way you can outturn that one, I can tell you that much. And that's two of our short-range air to air missiles down in under a minute. Now, I should also mention that this is my very first game in the Harrier. I haven't bothered touching any of the controls, I haven't bothered doing anything. I am overheating the engine a little bit as I'm trying to figure out, but can I just say that this game looks utterly gorgeous, especially with the new lighting effects. That sun is radiantly gorgeous, and I can't really, words can't describe how, I don't know, how good it looks. At the same time, I'm not necessarily realizing that I'm actually heading towards the enemy airfield, so we'll just turn away from that direction, and hopefully we can get another kill by going to the center of the map. Now yes, stock crew, stock everything, I made sure of that to test out how the Harrier experience would be. There's a G91 over there, he's chasing over to her. And there are a couple of G91s up high engaging the rest of our fighters. Now, I really like the Harry. I had immense fun on it on the dev server. You can watch the previous videos up in the cards. I had immense fun with it. Um, it was incredibly broken and still is, in my opinion. This thing could easily go up to 10.0, even 10.3, and still do just fine. Even if it is a subsonic jet, which can only just basically reach the upper limits of Mark 1, it's still a fantastic feat of technology, and I think that's what it needs to be remembered for, considering this thing did land on a boat when it ran out of fuel. There are heaps of other stories too, especially its interesting and, uh, well, important role in the Falklands. 
But that begs the question, are VTOLs really that useful in War Thunder? Well, the answer is yes and no. For combined arms, I think it's perfectly worth it. However, I don't think that this thing really is worth your purchase. Don't buy it, but considering Matchmaker is completely not as screwed right now, it's incredibly easy to play. This is my first match playing a Harrier, by the way. And I think that, importantly, there's going to be more types of aircraft like this coming in the future. For example, there have been spotted laser designation pods for certain types of aircraft, which allow for laser beam guided or guided weaponry to basically find their own targets. It's essentially fire and forget on a different level. Which, again, ground forces wise, it means you're absolutely screwed. But for aviation in general, it's just team deathmatch. There's no real point to having the hover VTOL mode unless you can get some epic kill or land on a ship or do something funky in air ba battles. There is real no point to having, uh, I guess, the uh, capability that we have here. Anyway, firing another SRAM, just fire and forget. Just watch him absolutely collide and explode. There's our third kill on the G91R3. We're going to get in more kills, who knows? Turning back around here, we're going to go after that MiG-15. Hopefully we can actually get another couple of kills. Be nice, we've only got one air-to-air -air missile left. We did fire some of our rounds, but ultimately it doesn't necessarily matter. I've just been casually flying around, you know, using my mouse control, a couple of keyboard control inputs, you know, activate a missile, fire a missile. That's really about it. This thing doesn't have countermeasures, although the later models, or should I say the in-tech tree variants, do. Now, I could have easily got the kill on this MiG-15, but watch what happens here. Honestly, I should have fired that short-range air-to-air -air missile closer to his particular aircraft. That doesn't necessarily matter, the MiG-15's basically dead anyway. But we're gonna have to do some turn fighting, and this thing doesn't do too well in that department. It rolls fantastically, the elevator control is okay. The rudder is where this aircraft really has its downfall, as it's not really a conventional aircraft in the, in the manner of speakings which you'd expect. But, again, he's stalling out. Hopefully we can get a kill on him. Maybe. Might get a kill. But suffice to say, if I was playing better and if I had led my shots a little better, that guy would be dead by now. And it's just unfortunate, because even as my first game, where I haven't had any experience flying a VTOL, it's these bloody short-range missiles that is doing all the havoc. Not the airframe itself, just this particular thing. I can understand why the Harrier is now 9.7. Ultimately, I screw up here royally. He should be able to kill me, but he doesn't. I think he's out of he's either out of ammunition or is just scaring me for a, a bit of a laugh. But ultimately, top tier jets probably won't be the same thanks to the addition of this particular aircraft. I'm not sure about the Yak 38, but I haven't really flown that much. I did fly it on the dev server a little bit. It's not as easy or intuitive to fly as this thing, however, and I suppose that's why everyone is playing it at the moment. While I have seen some utter fantastic matches in this particular aircraft, people getting five, six kills, seven kills even, I don't know if Gajan realizes how much of a power creep that this vehicle will eventually become. People are requesting more variants of this different aircraft, but what is it going to be when the next patch rolls around? What's the next premium that's going to be the best thing? Remember when the F-89 came into play around a similar battle rating, although in 7.7, .7, not 9.3 in 9.7, Essentially what happened was 262s ceased to exist. Like the G91YS, which is now 10.0 and has been for a while. I feel kind of perplexed at the way that Power Creep jumps up and then you need to buy this in order to be competitive. I don't like that aspect of War Thunder at all. Anyway, we're coming back into land. There's a MiG-15 over the airfield. Don't worry, he gets shot down by AAA. Anyway, we've just taken off and the airfield is destroyed. The Vatuas managed to bomb all the bases and I'm out on airfield, which is the first time I've ever seen that at top tier jets. Yes, this match did go on for 20 minutes, but that's the reason why. The bigger picture here, looking at it from an outsider perspective. War Thunder will constantly develop content a year in advance. They'll trickle feed content throughout the year in, in the form of event vehicles and so on and so forth, as well as minor and major updates. There are so many things they could have done and they're playing hopscotch and adding technology at a later point in time. And I feel like the F4E and the F4's edition did actually ruin top tier a little bit. That being said, we'll have a video on the MiG-21 soon. But, onto the results. Is this really worth your money? Is this really what you want? Three sh short range kills, easy peasy RP, there you go. 21,000 research points and 80,000 silver lines for three air kills. And we've got a whole, whole bunch of awards. We've got First Strike, Terror of the Sky, Double Strike, Bulletproof and, and whatever else. But it doesn't really matter. You know, the Harrier is definitely ruining the game, in my opinion. 
I'm glad it went up to 9.7, but this is my first match in the thing. And I do think, while it's not impossible to shoot them down, what you've got to do is you've got to stay fast, play smart, Never be less than two kilometers in front of one, and you shouldn't have as many problems as all of you seem to have. Well, have a fantastic Friday and have a fantastic weekend. We'll be covering some other games this weekend, particularly Enlisted and maybe some Armor 3. But aside from that, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. My name is Ash. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.